Welcome to the Brave Healing Podcast, everybody. I'm Laura DeFranco, the CEO of Brave Healer Productions, where we have a mission to change the world one brave word at a time around here. And today we're celebrating the birth of a new book, Find Your Voice, Save Your Life Too. This is a project from lead author Diana Leader. And I'm going to start by saying thank you so much to Diana for her vision and her mission for this book. Diana wants to help women step up and share their stories and voices, and in this instance, share them with the world in a much bigger way in terms of a published book. And if it wasn't for her, we wouldn't be here. So thank you, Diana. The women who are in this book and two of them who are joining me today are incredible, inspiring, powerful, wise women. And I'm so excited to introduce you to them today. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. <laughs> so you guys, Lindsay Ryling is an author and spiritual healer who believes that we're all connected and affected by one another's triumphs and struggles. And Dr. L. Proventure is a board certified doctor of natural health with a doctorate in traditional nat naturopathy. Did I get that right? <laughs> and a bachelor's of science in holistic bariatric nutrition. And of course, I've hooked you all up in the show notes below with their websites so that you can take a step further after you listen to their brilliance today, you guys. So, um, Lindsay, I'm going to start with you today. Tell me about this amazing chapter that you wrote for the book. Yes, it's a chapter about my moment of transformation. I like to say that I'm a proud wife of an alcoholic which is not something typical that you would hear somebody say. And for many years, it wouldn't be something that I would have said at all. I was the opposite of proud. I was ashamed. I was embarrassed. And so it took me a long time to figure out the, that I actually needed some healing as well. Um, it wasn't just my husband. He wasn't the only one being affected. I thought I was a strong, independent woman and I can handle anything and I'm going to just power through it. But I, my chapter is about the moment of transformation when I realized, oh, wow, I'm, I'm sick too. I need just as much healing as he does. I read those that well, especially the first scene with you. And literally I was feeling the tension in my body about it. And I know a lot of women will resonate I think that you and and you too, Dr. L, and really all of you authors, I have to say thank you for being so vulnerable in the sharing of your stories. Was it hard to write? It was, yes. Uh, I had done it a couple of times and I spoke it out to uh, another group just to bounce ideas off of. And I actually was halfway through it and I, I was doing okay. And then I just burst out bawling and then and a huge wave of emotion came through and I thought wow that's I didn't realize that was still in there and so it was it was very healing to go through it and I thought if I'm going to do a chapter like this it needs to be as real authentic vulnerable as possible because that's the way I'm going to help others who are in that um, maybe relate to my situation and I just wanted to um, be able to be myself and just get back into that, that space that I was in fully and remember, it's a, it's a good healing process for myself just to remember where I was at. And then it really shows me how far that I've come in my own healing journey as well. So I was waiting for that last bit, those last couple of bits, because you're starting to talk about something that's, um, I just, I love this topic. People are afraid to write because they're afraid that they'll open up Pandora's box of something from the past that, that they feel pretty good about the fact that they've maybe already healed it or, you know, and we all know that there's layers to this healing, but you didn't get stopped up or paralyzed, you just took that on and wrote and had the, all of the emotions come up. But it was that last thing you said just now about realizing how far you've come, right? What else do you wanna say about that? 
Yes, it has been a journey of, of little layers at a time. And I think throughout our lives, it's a continual healing journey. We always have things that come up that affect us in different ways. And, and like my bio said, I, I believe that we are all connected. So we are affected by everyone else's stories that we hear and our family and friends and things that, that happen to them in positive and maybe um, not so positive ways. And if we realize that and we are aware of that, it helps us with our healing journey and helps us with that peeling back the layers slowly and, and just being gentle with ourselves and being aware that the healing needs to take place, but that it's okay and we can show it. And I've told some friends before that if we are fully vulnerable, fully ourselves, then look around and see, did the, did the world crash in? Did something explode? Did you implode? What happened? And most of the time, and in my experience, it's, it's the opposite. Everything, I get more love, I get more support, I get more connection with others when I tell them my story because all of a sudden I explain what is going on with my life and then they feel free to do the same and be vulnerable with me too. And then that creates a really healing, connective bond between whoever I'm speaking with. So I was kind of hoping to do that with my chapter too, that other people would feel safe doing that too. And, and saying, you know what, I'm not alone. This actually happened to me or wow, I, I've really connect with her because I've been in a really rough place too. It doesn't have to be the exact same situation. Yes, this is one of the biggest gifts that all of our authors are giving you, uh, dear listeners today, is um, through that authenticity, they're giving you permission to tell your own story and be your own self and get out into the world and do your own healing. And um, again, I, I thank all of our authors for doing that so brilliantly. So uh, Dr. L, tell us about your amazing chapter. Yeah, just like Lindsay, um, I had to write it five times. Five? <laughs> <Bye. laughs> probably five because um, I needed to get to the core. And it was of my own healing as well. And uh, for mine, it was, you know, the constant struggle of who I was as a woman, but also I had a, a weight challenge most of my adult life. And I didn't understand why. And, um, and not that I was morally really obese, but it was heavier than I wanted to be. And I was constantly searching the answer, just like most women, like they get to an age and nothing works. And uh, lo and behold, the universe is always funny, puts you into a predicament where you're gonna learn real quick what it's about. And um, I've never, I'm not on any kind of medications. And I went to go work at a conference, a chiropractor conference. And I had three doctors come up to me and they said to me, honey, and you know, when a doctor starts off with honey, there's a problem. <laughs> and um, they had said that there was a problem with my heart. Now, I'd worked for a cardiologist and I knew emotionally that there was nothing wrong with my heart. It had been tested but my heart pulse was very low. So came back home and um, did some research, started to work with a different kind of doctor that discovered that I had high doses of copper in my body. Now, when I was three, I did swallow a penny in church. You know, I'm thinking, <laughs> I knew they took it out. I have it in the test tube. I know it's not in there anymore, but who knows, right? And maybe I ate too, I don't know. Um, but anyway, that was that. So I had this high levels of coppers, which was, my was what the culprit was and that wasn't a normal test just was a hair analysis that was done but I doing what I do is like I, I didn't think of that as being the answer so my lo and behold was my patients you know primarily are women and you know they're suffering from obesity or they're suffering from you know they don't feel good their hormones are shot everything is there and I'm like oh my god I'm my patient you know, so I started to research more about cellular detox and I came across some product lines where lo and behold, I found the solution. And because of this, this is how I started writing the chapter about my journey. And I was just like, okay, this is it. You know, so I will say in parts where, you know, I have, you know, 
a lot of information about nutrition and I was overweight. How does that look? You know, I don't want to be a stick. I'm not built like that anyway, but do you know what I mean? It was just like, I am nutritionally sound, but how do I get well? So my whole story is about how I got well and how I can engage other women to learn how to become well, that it's not their fault sometimes. It's not because of what you're putting in your mouth, right? Where most of us, it's like, oh, you're overeating. The doctor's telling you, and you're like, oh my goodness, I'm eating, you know, water and crackers, really? And so figuring out that there was a cellular disruption in the body and that was, that was it. And just like you, Lindsay, you know, I got halfway through and I'm like, you know, (laughs) gosh, there it is, you know? So um, from that, I've just been able to springboard from not only the story, but also to be able to help more people, to empower people, to reduce their weight in a natural way. That's just making them feel phenomenal. You know, so it's, it's been you know, like the universe gives you the two by four upside the head. And then you're like, okay, I'm here. I've arrived. I will surrender and learn. And that's what I did. So um, writing this, writing the chapter was huge, was huge. It really was. So thank you. I, um, I, I'm hearing the part about sometimes we are our worst own patients. Mm-hmm. And I know in my physical therapy practice over the years, that's been the case a lot of times. And when, when we're prioritizing our own health and healing, we become our best patients. And then of course we can teach and, and share, but a lot of the times we're helping so many other people that we get lot lost as last. Yep. Um, and I, I don't know, I just heard that part. Is, is there anything else you want to say about that? You know, because, you know, from writing this, you know, the chapter, I can tell you, I feel like my life has changed. It really has. It's opened up so many opportunities for me because apparently I, I shed something. Mm -hmm. And as I know about cellular detoxification, right? Every cell has a memory. Every cell has an emotion. So when I was able to reduce my weight by 40 pounds, like really I was blowing up, was not good, was not healthy. I didn't feel well. Now I feel far more empowered. I feel far more comfortable in my body. And I, you know, my, conversations with my husband are far more eloquent whereas you know what he says I'm like yeah whatever okay (laughs) you know let it go through I'm I'm happy though he actually started doing my little program and he dropped like 10 pounds in four days so he's feeling ecstatic so I'm like (laughs) it's it's good so that's what I'm doing so um Dr. L, I'm going to stick with you for this next question, and then I'm going to come over to Lindsay for this for the answer too. But you just talked about speaking with your husband, and you guys like sharing your voice, whether it's in a private conversation with a loved one, or standing up for something you believe in, or publishing words in a book. It takes courage, and even in those instances of having it just be a loved one, so. Um, Al, tell me about why being brave about sharing your voice has been important to you. Um, well, I am, well, my family is from Belgium. Okay. So in my mind, I'm the UN. <laughs> I don't <laughs> yell. I don't scream. I, you know, my kids know they're like, if I ever raise my voice two decibels or like, you know, that's about it. So, and my husband is very vocal, says what he wants to say regardless. <laughs> and what I've discovered is I, you know, like I said, it doesn't affect me the same now where now I'm like, yeah, no, thank you. No, thank you. And I had said that to him one time and he was like, what the hell are you talking about? I'm like, yeah, no, thank you to that. I don't, I don't need that anymore. You know, I love you dearly, but your thoughts are your thoughts and they may not agree with mine and it's okay to disagree. And that kind of like stopped it. It was, it was very weird because I remember the moment it happened and I was like, huh, look at that. So I think by, you know, sharing your voice, by learning your, by learning your voice and trusting your voice, it doesn't mean you have to go off on a tangent, right? It doesn't mean you have to rip everybody a new one. It just means like you have to be safe within yourself and feel comfortable that you have the power to empower yourself, to empower others. And that know that, you know, this is your life here. It's about being your authentic self. It's about, you know, embracing the gifts that you have so that you become whole. And then when we become whole ourselves, the universe just opens up for us. You know, things magically appear, if you will, but you feel better emotionally, physically, and spiritually. 
And, you know, if something doesn't work with the husband, you know, you figure it out. Right. And I know, Lindsay, you've been married a long time. I have as well. And, and you know what? We we can't wait on the roof with a shotgun. Just can't. It's not OK. <laughs> you know? So we just, you know, work with them. We work with them and you learn. So for me, it was about figuring out really what my truth was and and not being afraid to share my words in the way that was comfortable for me. And that's the way it still is. So I'm very calm about it and we share and it's good. It's good now. I love that, Al, thank you. Um, Lindsay, what do you wanna add about the importance for you of being brave about sharing your words? Mm -hmm. I like to say uh, to my kids that courage is a muscle. It's something that you can build upon. Do you, a lot of times we think, oh, that person is brave or that person is, is weaker or, or shy or not as brave, but bravery can be practiced. Courage can be practiced. And slowly, 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 the more that you do it, the easier it becomes. And like I said before, you realize that the world didn't crash in. So you take little steps out of your comfort zone and maybe it just starts with, for me, it was, it was just being open with my husband saying, we need to do something. We need help. Uh, we can't do this on our own. We've tried. What, what can we do next? So the first step for us was just being brave enough to ask for help with, and, and be open with each other about what was really going on. Because for so many years, we were so private and we were scared to share anything with anybody, um, let alone now the world. And so the more that we just, uh, and I think when we, when we first started to get help, I said to my kids, I'm going to be open with you about what's going on. And I was in the kid friendly manner, of course, and I wanted them to realize that it's okay to ask for help. And that as adults, as we grow up, we can ask for help and it's okay. We're not perfect beings. We never have been, never will be. We're just unique people. So as we grow up, we still have to ask for help. We still have things that we can't figure out. So little by little, we step out of our comfort zone and we realize that it's okay. And then we go a step further. And then we started telling more of our friends and more of our family and, and other people around. And it's slowly built up. And, and that went along with our healing as well, kind of side by side. As we healed, we felt more brave and, and would step more and more out of our comfort its own too so it's it's a muscle that can be practiced so if there's anybody out there who thinks well I'm not a courageous person I don't consider myself brave just tiny little steps and you can increase that that courageousness and and bravery as we go along through life and I think that's really important to teach our kids too and I love that you're um, talking about modeling these things for children and all the ways that parents and teachers and coaches have that responsibility, we should take it, right? Mm -hmm. And just um, understand that by modeling those things, we create better humans. And um, thank you for um, taking that conversation to, to, that, to that place with the kids. I think about my own quite a bit. And um, if I could help my daughter and my son both move into the world already having found pieces of their voice, not having to take a decades, you know, worth of time to like figure that out, then I think that'll be a small win for me, <laughs> you know, and them for sure. Exactly. And just being able <laughs> to own our stories and just say, this is what happened. This, I, I didn't, you know, really plan on this happening. And we rarely do when those things come up, but what can we learn for it, from it? And where can we go from here? And, and it's okay. Yeah. We don't need to be perfect. We don't need to, it's, it's hard for kids nowadays too, or for adults too, in that, in that matter on social media and everything. And just owning our story, I think is a, is a big part of it and just being okay with it and going forward. And I think that helps to um, be able to express your voice as well is just saying, this is me, take me or leave me. That's okay. <laughs> Um, I don't, I just go from here and own it. So you, both of you ladies are talking about something really important in, in a different ways you're talking about it. And that would be awareness. So people 
are at all different stages of in terms of speaking up. Okay, so I know that it's been quite a journey for me, but that journey, I believe, is about my awareness practice. And it was through that um, being aware of thoughts and words, <clears throat> actions, sensations. Um, and, you know, Dr. L was talking about being aware that you're not in a body that makes, you know, turns you on and all of the different ways we feel ourselves. But when I was aware, I could make decisions about my voice, about what it meant, about sharing it. And what I want to know, um, Lindsay, I'm going to stick with you first, is what, how did the awareness play into this for you on that, on that journey of yours? Mm -hmm. Well, for so many years, it was something that I felt shameful about that our family was going through. And it was so secret that I was mostly concerned with just making sure nobody else knew or making sure that from day to day, we were just, it was like a survival mode, basically. And I think a lot of us can relate to in different situations in our lives, being in that survival mode where we're just going day to day. And in my chapter, I talk about that moment of transformation that for me was the moment of awareness. And so once that I, I like to say, and, and I know you've probably heard it too, but once you're aware, you can never be unaware. So once that comes up and you know about it, and I thought, oh my gosh, like I need to really heal. I didn't realize all this anger and rage was inside. I, I thought I was being okay. And and managing well and then all of a sudden I realized that wow I really wasn't and and the person that I was was not who I wanted to be anymore and so slowly the awareness came that way and and little by little the healing started and I thought okay what can I handle as far as healing goes right now and meditation was was one of them and um talking to others, um, going, just sharing my story was a lot of the healing process and being aware that I wasn't alone because I think we all think uh, a lot that my situation is unique. Nobody else is like me. And when we see that we aren't as unique as we thought, it, it is really healing in that. And then we're, we, we start to slowly peel back the layers again of awareness as, as well just saying you know what it's okay uh what can i do next and once that process i think once the ball kind of just slowly starts rolling it just picks up speed as you go because you realize how good it feels and that you just want to keep going with it i resonate with that uh, rolling ball for sure <laughs> dr l um talk to me about your how awareness played a part in your journey Awareness was a huge piece. He said, once I got the diagnosis, if you would, um, that set me on a different path where for me, it was about digging deeper and finding out how my body felt about it. And, you know, I was afraid, you know, and I, I mean, I have grandkids and, you know, husband and family and I was like, oh my goodness. And taking responsibility for my own solution. But during, and, and I love that you keep saying uh, transformation, Lindsay, because that is a huge piece of the program that I developed after this is like, it's all about your transformation, get ready for your transformation. And that's really what did happen. And as I started to reduce my weight, I became so much more in my body, right? Like I felt grounded. I can remember it was eight days in and there was like this snap and I was like, oh, what is that? And I just felt solid within my body. And I hadn't felt her, if you would, for many years. And it was like the old me was coming back. She had come back to life because she had been so stagnant for so many years. I mean, nobody knew. Nobody had no idea. But inside, I, was, I wasn't feeling well. I was forgetting things. And it just wasn't right. And I'm like, oh, my God, I got you know, 10 years of college. I don't want to lose all that. And right? <laughs> I feel like, where did that go? Um, but being aware of my actions, being aware of how I could change and staying truthful to myself, I found that my willpower increased, right? I wasn't afraid to say things, you know, to the husband, of course, in my manner, like gently, of course, that's how I am. But I also took responsibility for my thoughts and how I wanted them to 
respond in my body. So all those negative chatter I was saying to myself for years, I'm like, yeah, that's enough of that. And I just found that through the awareness, I also chose and made a decision. And in that decision, I said, just for today, I'm going to trust. And whatever you want to trust in is okay. But for me, it was, I'm going to trust in myself that I have the power to remain on track. And I have the power to amaze myself. And I have the power to transform if I thus choose. And I did. And every day, you know, I made that decision, you know, today we're going to transform. Today you're going to transform. And then as I started to help other women on their journey, it just brought me such blessings and joy to see them transform for women that had been stuck for many years to reduce their weight and feel better and get off their medications and, you know, be able to walk from the end of the parking lot to the grocery store without having to stop five times out of breath. And that just feeds my fire even more because I know that, you know, my journey is helping others. And, you know, that was my awareness. It's like, you know, maybe that's your, that's your mission here on earth is to help others to empower themselves with nutrition and, and wellness and, and health and clearing your cells of that negative debris is part of it. And, you know, just like you, there was meditation and there's guidance. And like, I was writing my own hypnosis scripts, you know, hypnotizing myself. <laughs> That's actually a chapter I wrote for Laura in another book. <laughs> but I was hypnotizing myself, but with those positive thoughts. And as I did it for myself, I, you know, I offered it to others and, you know, they became well. And it's just like, it just feel like this movement of transformation for women and men as well, you know, just started because I opened up my mouth and I wasn't afraid to speak. And I wasn't afraid to ask for help, right? And, and that was huge. Like I've got, you know, goosebumps from that. So thank you for bringing that back out. <laughs> I, so. uh, I just wrote down uh, from you, trust that you have the power to amaze yourself. I love that. Yeah. That one will show up as a little uh, Facebook You're meme welcome. pretty soon, <laughs> Dr. L. Um, I love it. Um, okay, so I'm going to stick with you for this next question. What, many women I speak to identify with the label of recovering good girl. Mm. So do you resonate? What does it mean to you? Tell me about that. So uh, I was a good girl, right? I did what my parents said. I am. Um, we, we have no family in the United States except my parents and my brother and I. So my upbringing was completely different and I had to be the good girl always. Um, my voice was not heard. My brother was a golden child. Sorry, Eddie, if you ever hear this, but he was, he's a golden child. To this day, he's the golden child. He can do no wrong, you know, and it got to a point and through this transition of me reducing, you know, my weight and getting healthier, you know, I started to look at that story and, you know, wondering, you know, what was it? Why is he the golden child? You know, so I opened up my mouth. I asked my mother, I did scared to death to ask my mother, you know, and my, my beautiful mother's 89, my dad's 92. I'm so faith, you know, blessed to still have them. And my perception had changed where my whole life, he was the golden child and I wasn't allowed to speak. The reality is, is my brother nearly died at birth and my mother guilted herself about that. And that stayed in her awareness and me finally hearing the whole story. There's much to, more to it. I was like, all right, my perception had changed. And, you know, I love my brother dearly. We're completely different, but, you know, I saw also how it affected him. And of course, being of European, right. It's always the, the boy is always that. And now it, it's changed. Like I see my relationship with my parents differently. And because I became aware of that, um, you know, the good girl, she opens her mouth now. And if what I find is, is historically women around 45, right? When they start to perimenopause, they're starting in the beginning, all of a sudden they're saying stuff because they're like, yeah, that's enough of that, right? So anger is stored in the cells around in your muscles and your joints. So if you're not stretching, literally your brain or your mind, all that anger gets stuck, right? And then it's got to come out somehow. And then you choose. If for me, it was... I didn't get mad. I got to the point where I swallowed it and swallowed it and swallowed it and swallowed it just like many women. And then with my husband, swallow, 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 swallow. And I just was like, that, that's enough. And that swallowing of all that information became weight on me. It, the copper imbalance is actually your body trying to insulate yourself from pain or abuse. 
So I didn't have physical abuse from my husband, but you know, he could get a little mousy. I created abuse within my being because I believed I wasn't allowed to speak. I took it as abuse, even though it wasn't. That's how my body rallied it up. So in a lot of women, that's there. So I started doing yoga. I started to stretch. I started to be aware of my thoughts. And I also journaled it out. And I'm right-handed. So I was starting to write it with my left hand. So my other side of my brain would dump and let me talk. Okay, you got to learn how to do that, right? Don't worry about your handwriting, right? <laughs> and, and I started to come to that, you know, I feel better. So for me, it wasn't about yelling and screaming and finding my voice. My finding my voice was, you know, authoring, you know, so this is my third, you know, chapter with Laura and I'm watching my growth happen. And now because I've spoken my truth, if you would, um, in my manner, again, you know, it's, it's grace and ease. That's how I work. I just feel empowered to myself and that, you know, I'm not going to swallow it anymore. I can say my words and when someone challenges me on that, I'm like, I have thoughts, I have words, and I am allowed to speak. Mm. And I'll say it like that. And it kind of scares them now a little bit uh. now, but <laughs> I'm allowed to speak. So that's what it brought for me. And I hope that that inspires others. You know, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. You can speak. And if you can't speak the words, write the words. And if you can't write the words, you know, take up your phone and you know, video yourself blasting whoever you need to blast to get it out. Don't let it stay inside. It's not healthy. It will eventually cause inflammation inside of your body, which will resort to diseases and weight and all this stuff that you really don't want. So, you know, love yourself enough to trust your body and to trust your soul and to trust your words that, you know, you're okay. Yes. And that's kind of what I'm about all of those things are so deeply connected and I love listening to you talk about those, that integration and that connection, really powerful and very inspiring. Thank you. Um, Lindsay, wrap us up today with your thoughts about recovering good girl. Do you resonate or not? Why, why or why not? Oh, for sure. Yes. <laughs> I, uh, I've been in the process of, of writing my memoir, which will be out this fall in good spirits. And during that process of writing my memoir, you, you think you know your story pretty well, you lived it. As I was writing it down, and I was thinking when you were saying that too, Elle, about journaling and how healing that is, and that was part of my journey as well. And writing down my story, when I was little, I was very vocal. I was you know, would say what I wanted and, and I would not be afraid to ask or not be afraid to demand things. There's a, there's a story about when we went to a fancy buffet, our whole family, and it was this strawberry buffet. It was the, the whole hotel was just, everything was advertised strawberries, these amazing strawberries. And I was around four years old. So we sit down with our buffet of strawberries on our table and I go to take a bite of one and I and I look back and there's a worm in the strawberry <laughs> and I jump up on the bench like on the um what do you call it booth jump up there's a worm in my strawberry <laughs> why would they put a worm in my strawberry <laughs> and my mom loves telling this story and she said they they were giggling and laughing so hard but they were also trying to just be like shh, 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 like <laughs> because the whole restaurant just stopped and went looking at their own strawberries <laughs> going oh my gosh and we kind of just got like you know oh we're good now let's just you know scoot scoot away but as I was um, going through my childhood, my older brother had leukemia. And so my younger sister and I would, it, it kind of developed that good girl because we could feel. And at that, at that time, we, we didn't talk about being an empath. We didn't talk about being able to feel someone else's energy and taking in that energy as ours. So we would feel the sadness and the confusion and and scariness, the fear of my parents, of my, um, I'm the youngest of four, my other, my oldest sister and my brother. And so my sister and I just started to, okay, let's, let's be really good. Let's not say anything. Let's just try and keep the peace. We could feel that energy and we just wanted to neutralize it. We just wanted to not be another 
something more bothersome. You know, we didn't, we didn't want to add to the stress and the sadness that was going on with my brother. And I actually didn't realize that until I started writing my memoir as I was going through. So it was really healing and enlightening. And, and like we said before, now that I was aware of that pattern, I realized how I acted with my husband. It was the same kind of thing. I could feel his emotions. I could feel um, what was going on uh, in our family at the time and, and his sadness and his fear and guilt and shame. And so I would try and just cover it up. I would try and, uh, okay, let's do this fun thing instead, or, or, you know, try and make people happy. Or I would try and just, oh, I should be grateful. I should be so grateful because I have a house. I have healthy kids. I have a nice family. My parent, I'm close with my parents and my sisters. And I would try to just cover it up and just keep the peace and make everybody okay and make sure we looked okay and, and that the outside world saw that we were okay. So it was, it was an interesting thing when I was writing it to realize that, wow, I, I do remember when I was really vocal and was not scared to use my voice and how that changed because of my brother's childhood illness and how it morphed into adulthood. And I hadn't really realized that the pattern was there and so once I became aware of that, then I could consciously choose how I wanted to act, how I wanted to behave, how I wanted my life to be. And like Al said, you know, I'm, I'm 41 now. So for me, it was like right that year of 40 where it's like, nope, I'm done enough. I want to, I want to bring back that strawberry spitfire who is not afraid to announce the the worm in the strawberry i am going to be myself and warts and all worms and all i should say and uh and and just not be um well just just be aware at all times and be conscious i think consciousness and and awareness that things are affecting us I feel different things in my body. I'm, my husband maybe will come home from a stressful day and, and I'll feel that and I'll be aware and be able to recognize that and say, okay, I can choose to let that go or I can choose to um, voice it and say, hey, are you, is, is, did I do something? Or are you grumpy at me? Or is this, you know, something with you? And even a tiny little thing like that can shift the energy and it can just go oh, and he'll say oh it's just a you know I had a lot at work today that's all and and it just calms everybody down and and we're not carrying that because I think as women and as girl, good girls we take those on yep. we think oh it's about me and oh they looked at me funny so it's about me instead of just saying sorry did I do something uh, and, and a big part of um, the 12 steps with Al-Anon and, and AA is making amends. And when you go through your 12 steps, at the end, a big part of it is um, making sure those amends are ongoing and that you deal with them right away. So did I do something to upset you or just saying, you know what, I'm really grumpy today and I just, I'm going to own that and something upset me let's talk it out and just being open and honest with each other and just being able to voice those little things that come up because I think that's a lot of it is those little things just build and build and build and then they become a huge thing and we don't realize and and like I was saying too like they they get stuck in our body and then we can't work them through and then there's so many of them that it's hard to sort through everything and where did these originate and and then our patience goes out the window and we explode on somebody for no reason. And, and a lot of these things were, were happening with me too, with triggers and, and all of that, that just in regular everyday life. So being aware of that and dealing with them right away just makes everything so much simpler and easier to deal with. So as you guys can tell, um these women are passionate about these topics <laughs> and there's a lot I think every woman has a recovering good, good girl full book in them seriously from all of the women that I speak with 
Um, and also listeners, you know, you're hearing that storytelling is a powerful form of healing. It's powerful for us to be able to tell our stories. There's healing moments in it for you, the writer, the journaler, the speaker, um, but there's the healing moment in the receiver when they nod their head in resonance with your message and um, they're getting permission to do their own, right? Live their own life. So I encourage all of you that sharing your stories is important. And if you haven't even done it in the form of journaling before, that that would be a really, really great place to start. Um, Dr. L and Lindsay, thank you so much for what you're doing in the world and for being here today to share it with everyone. Thank you. Such a pleasure. And Lindsay, I think you should write your book as your memoirs of there's a, there's a worm in my strawberry. I think that's, <laughs> yeah. a, that's a good book title yeah. <laughs> for sure. Um, I want to say a really special thank you to Dr. L who has helped me um, in this last month of uh, at the end of a sort of a desperate plea of, you know, 10 extra pounds of COVID weight. Um, when I literally just reached out to her and said, I need your help. I'm not really sure what kind of help I need, but I think you can help me. And I've been working with her to shed, you know, what I thought was going to be 10 pounds and ended up being about 12 so far and feeling mm -hmm. that solid, solid feeling in my body, like she described earlier. And the reason I wanted to tell you this story is because now that we're all coming out of our hiding places and our homes, and we're going to be for in my case, stepping on stages again, and all of those things where I will be sharing my voice much more out loud, I started to ask myself, who do you wanna be, Laura, when you step on that stage again? Who do you wanna be and what is that voice that needs to be expressed? And working on myself from that um, you know, mind, body, soul perspective, getting back into that solid grounded centered body that is so strong and so powerful um, was really quite a gift. So thank you, Dr. L. Thank you. And I'm um, so that it's working for you and, and everyone that listens to this, you know, Cool. So <laughs> listeners, please take the next step, scroll down into the show notes, um, both Dr. L and Lindsay's websites are there for you to explore and figure out all of the awesomeness that's up in their worlds right now, because there's a lot. And I also want to uh, remind you to join us on the Brave Healer Productions Facebook page on August 3rd at 10 a.m. Eastern when we're going to be having a little book launch party celebration with all of our authors. We're going to have some cool giveaways. The authors will be there to inspire you to find your voice. And if you're listening after August 3rd, well, that means that the book is ready and it's on Amazon and you need to get your butt over there and grab your copy of Find Your Voice, Save Your Life 2. Lastly, everybody remember, you were born, so you are worthy. Your message matters. What if the thing you're still a little afraid to share is exactly what someone needs to hear to change or even save their life? It's time to be brave, you guys. See you next time. Bye, ladies. Take care.